Buy a round for me. Buy a round. We'll pay you in alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Boston with Doug Teeny, the COO of Corindus, and we're talking about probably one of the biggest risks to technology, especially in the med tech world, is acceptance and adoption. And the normalization of a robot, think about it, a robot giving you care and deciding potentially life or death for you. This is fascinating. I know that people have the fear that, okay, I want my doctor in the room. Right. That's yeah, normal, I isn't it? It's normal and I think it's appropriate. And, and so this kind of concept on racing to a telerobotic solution, we have those same thought processes that go through our design considerations. We still have to solve for some of those clinical challenges, but I tell folks sometimes it's a completely valid concern and until we build confidence in you that it's a safe, low risk procedure without the physician in the room, you should be speculating. How much, because we'll get there. How, how much time are you spending in educating the patient? Um, well, right now we're in research mode. So we're working with physicians and we're working with theoretical and philosophical questions. But I want to be your isn't marketing a ton guy. Of I want to be your yeah. marketing guy. Why are we going to wait until we perfect the technology to start educating the patient? I, I agree. I would and I think my message have to my the patient. marketing people out there right now saying, let's start. Let's start right now educating the patient because your tech's going to get there in 24 months. Yeah, and trust me, everybody we talk to, we're educating. But, but I think it's a, it's a valid point because in the end, if I'm a patient and there's a solution that will give me a better quality of life, sign me up anytime. So what, how, how do we teach them? It's, or do we ask them to be blind? It's an interesting question. There's part of me that, that suggests or that thinks that we don't need to based on what we've seen with robotics. And it's Inte this whole concept Intellectuals of, generally do that. Well, no, but, but I think um, it's, it's based on patient interaction on local robotics. Okay. So they can connect. A, a, an average patient who hasn't studied robotics can connect with the fact that my physician's right here talking to me. Right. And they have a tool that they're going to use that they say will give us a better outcome. I trust them. I'm here, so, though. I'm here. But we have to think about how you recreate that same trust relationship and that level of immersion for both the physician and the patient in, in telerobotics. In this episode, I sit with Mark Toland, who is the president and CEO of Corindus. Uh, Corindus is that uh, neurovascular robot and cardiovascular robot. And we, we discuss 5G and security. And those are related because 5G is empowering the stroke platform for Corindus. But cybersecurity has come under some very, very interesting sort of purview with the FDA as well as the public. So enjoy Mark's perspective on this because they've got to be hypersensitized to it. The thing that healthcare benefits from 5G is the fact that it's secure. So when you and I are on our phones and we're in the public sector, mm -hmm. that's where security is at risk. Sure. You know, this and all the naysayers point their fingers at that, right? Security, 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 as they give away their credit cards on Facebook and as they give away... Well, their... it's becoming a big issue. So, you know, the FDA has really taken a hard stance on cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. So it's become a big macro issue globally. Uh, but in here in the U.S., uh, I think the regulatory bodies are looking at cybersecurity completely different. So they didn't have the cybersecurity issues that they were thinking about. So now they're trying to take current devices and then uh, trying to understand how they would then augment their plan yeah. or strategy for, for, for this. Yeah. I think about it, I've got a camera in there. I got a camera in ICD. Yeah, so you and know. So you, I know, you know, I, yeah. I don't think about it. I've been hacked, I've had my credit card stolen, I've had all these other things. Yeah. I'm just counting on the black hats, the bad guys, to be going after <laughs> higher value targets. <laughs> yeah, now you, now you think about it, you start to understand it a little bit more, and yeah, it's a risk. So mm -hmm. I think the government's starting to crack down in a big way. I'm in Dublin with Scott Hunnikins, and Scott is discussing a really interesting point is you think about surgery and you think about this being arguably one of the most important activities that can occur person to person, yet technology has not been mm, intensely embraced in it. And Scott brings up some great insight as to how should and how is tech now being incorporated into the surgical environment. On the robotic side, we can actually capture data and then use that to teach current surgeons, future surgeons, and right. then make that a loop. So we, it's like watching game day tape. 
right? But doing it with a computer that analyzes every movement of every lineman, of every person on the field, and increases efficiencies. Yeah. So, how old is a is a neurosurgeon by the time he gets through his all of his training and gets late thirties? He's late thirties, right? And you know, by his late forties, he's like burned out and almost done. You know, right from from his ability to control. So there's like you put all this huge investment into someone yeah. to build this skill set and they have a short window of performance and then they're then they're done wow can we make it so that that person could we, we, can, we can get them doing surgery earlier on their own can we change training so you need less to become proficient so it's not a 12 year 15 year window it's a it's a 20 plus year window and when that person re retires you've been capturing all of their robotic motions in video to pass it forward for 20, and you can play it forward back to the person uh, before that's what gets really super exciting.